It's ridiculous. I think you're doing some quite complicated uh, sort of mental arithmetic to make it to offset the fact that people didn't think you were funny. Uh, I think the reality well, is... Well, the, when this, you, these students no, okay, saw no, me performing at Top Secret Comedy Club, one of the uh, best comedy clubs in the country, and invited me to come okay, on talk, the charity gig. we can both talk, or I can talk, but I'm not well, going to stop talking. Okay, okay, so if you wait, well, I'll have... You had your, wow, you had your go Wow, wow, like, what okay. a blowhard. Whoever pays the piper calls the tune. If you're a really good comedian, you can be funny without being offensive. One minute later. What kind of joke do you find funny? I find really offensive humour very funny, personally. You do? I Hypocrite! Really, really rude. I'm outraged. Later. On a university event, you can't have jokes about being gay or being trans or about ethnicity. It's not going to vote in this election. I'm not going to vote in this. Last time I voted, they called it Russian interference. <laughs> <laughs> and they're saying the Russians were responsible for Brexit as well. Have you heard this? The Russians were responsible. I'm sorry. If we were responsible for Brexit, Brexit would be done. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We'd be out. We would have taken the chunk of France with us. <laughs> Little bit of Italy. Only three years for negotiations. <laughs> three minutes. One meeting. Done. <laughs> Just go over, the, over to Europe, undermine everybody. It's like, ah, oh, you're all here. <laughs> President Macaroon. <laughs> Donald Tusk, Jean-Claude Wanker. <laughs> Very good. Okay, first things first, we're supposed to leave in January. We left yesterday. <laughs> that is how much we don't like you. Also, we have this uh, problem with the Irish border. Yes, it's uh, very complicated. Uh, explain to me, what is uh, border? <laughs> in Russia, we don't have this. Um, we don't have it in America either. Before I go, I should explain. We had a little bit of how you say a uh, revolution in People's Republic of Britain. <laughs> yes, we removed Theresa May, so now we have Prime Minister with Russian name. <laughs> Good old Boris Johnson. And Here's later Natasha. They have Russian policies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, actually, we arrested Comrade Corbyn, but uh, that guy's tough. <laughs> yeah, we interrogate him for a week. Still don't know what his position on Brexit is. The party, like many left-wing parties all over the West, they've been entrapped by the woke mind virus you've been talking about. So Absolutely. you can't talk about immigration if you're on the left because you're afraid of the people to your left. Right. You're afraid of saying you're racist. Exactly. Right. And, and, and we have this problem in England where I live. No. We, we have ethnic minority uh, politicians who are attempting to deal with this issue, they're still being called racist. You, you can't deal with it properly, and that's why she's been saddled with it. I mean, Bernie Sanders used to be one of the most virulent immigration restrictionists. Right. And his Absolutely. argument was that it, 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 it suppresses um, working class wages, Changes which is an argument too. some economists make. He's backed away from that in recent years. Be elected. It's Has not just Bernie Sanders, it's left. Bill Clinton, it's Hillary Clinton, it's Chuck Schumer. It's all the Democrats and it's all the people Absolutely. in England just the same on the left. Everybody used to agree that countries need borders, and for some reason we've forgotten that. How does... A complete red herring. If the, your bank account was no, closed, no, probably wouldn't be a red herring no, for no, you. This is, it's a complete red herring. What's happening is that there are international rules on money laundering. And whether we, whether we have an inquiry into them or whether you have a bank account that you, with a bank that you don't like, those rules won't change. Those rules are there to protect us and to protect no, the shareholders of banks no, against they're not. people who end up money laundering. Now, politically exposed people, there's a lot of them. There's two around this table. <laughs> um, uh, there's a lot of them. Banks must, uh, must assure themselves that their sources of fund and wealth are real. So we don't, don't know what do the it to other people with, with Farage, but one of the things banks have to do not on is the they left, have they to don't take do account it. of what the news flow is around that person. Now, rightly or wrongly, a Labour bank accused Nigel Farage of taking half a million pounds from the Russian government. Whether that's and Farage denies it, whether it's true or not, the bank has to take account of it, and then just has to say, well, are we running a risk that we don't want to run? And that's really all that's going on. Uh, probably the same thing with you. You I'm probably not a the same. Well, 
So how is that happening with me? We don't we don't know. I don't know your personal case. So you just we, said it's but, probably happening with me, but yeah, you don't but know. But the, the bank, yeah, the, they're taking a principal decision about the risks how that do you they're know? running. You have well, no idea how they're I do know. I do because I understand banking regulations. No, you don't understand anything, you twat. They have to follow their own regulations. This is such an interesting transformation that's happened to people like you on the left. People the left, like me. The yes, the left, people like you left this. used to be about protecting the ordinary person from big corporations <laughs> and big government and all of this stuff. That's what you used to believe in. And here you are, you're sitting and defending a banking corporation, I'm defending having no idea law. why they made the decision I'm defending that they made. international banking regulation and law. You're it's defending a great cause crap that is there to protect you and me from scammers you and, me. and money I can just tell you, I don't feel very protected right now. Let's, let's, hear, from our, let's hear from our... The important point here is that this isn't just happening to the so-called exposed people. You made the point this is happening to a lot of people in very low incomes, and that's one of the points I've been Absolutely. to emphasize throughout this whole thing. My podcast has a million subscribers across different platforms. I can go out and get attention for this in the yes. media. So can Nigel Farage. If you're someone who earns 20 grand and you said the screwed. wrong thing somewhere that someone didn't Up like the river it without a paddle. Account, what are you going to do? No, that was, and so this that is wasn't what, the point I was making. The but it's the point I'm making. Yeah, but you clipped it to what I said. The point I'm making is that there are people on low incomes who are trying to get access to financial services. Yes. Is really hard. And I'd like to see the banks do a little really bit more hard. than that Fine. on that. And that's really comes back to what Keir Kutsama has been saying about access to all kinds of services for people on lower incomes. My, uh, fine. My point is, well, I think it's very unwise and short term is for people to say, well, as long as it's happening to Nigel Farage, this is okay. And I would remind you, whatever you personally may feel about Nigel Farage, I voted Remain in the Brexit referendum. Nigel Farage represents a hell of a lot of people in this country. Absolutely. And he represents people that he's this never been elected. Ho- doesn't, Ooh, so really what a twit. What a twat. Single, he's never won he represents a, a hell of a lot more people than you, Bob. Oh, oh check and mate. Way to go. Let them stand for parliament. That isn't my point. <laughs> my point is, this is not about some wack- wacko on the far end of the political spectrum having their bank account closed. This is someone who has a mainstream view uh, in this country, and this is completely unacceptable to be happening to someone. Is like there that. a problem, though, that it took a, a being called a Nazi comedian, right? Is I now got a niche. <laughs> <laughs> a Nazi niche. I've got, I've got my voice. I've got something to write into. Right. <laughs> Problem is, I haven't got any racist, sexist, homophobic jokes. <laughs> I'm actually quite a progressive guy. Like some of my best friends are gender fluid lesbians of color. <laughs> I don't get on with all of them. I just I'm progressive, so I have to, you know, fill the quota. That's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do have progressive, I have progressive, like, you know, a lot of people in this room, they've got an issue with the trans thing. I really don't. Like, look how silent it is in here all of a sudden. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I get it. I get it. Especially, especially the women who want to become men. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've seen it. You've seen it. Like, think about it. Do you remember when Gareth Bale, right, went from Tottenham to Real Madrid? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the guy left a perfectly good club for more money. Man, Kissing just delivers the goods. I mean, it's just amazing what he's been able to do. First generation immigrant from Russia, comes to the UK, starts doing comedy, starts building his brand. Next, you know, he just gets into this whole political scene, basically, as he's just trying to, because of what's happening. I mean, people are like trying to, you know, ban him, deplatform him, because he went to this college and made some jokes that just upset and ruffled the feathers of some snowflakes and some virtue signaling leftist hypocrites. That we saw, you know, the first lady in the clip, the first girl. <laughs> oh, oh, we can both talk or you can talk, but we can't talk. And if I'm talking, what the heck was that? I would have told her, you know what, lady, maybe you ought to stop going to the buffet so often. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh oh, offensive, triggering, triggering. And then, The thing that I like about Kissin is, at least so far, there doesn't seem to be any hypocrisy on that in terms of the culture wars. He definitely is hitting it hard. So on some issues, he basically says that he's not conservative or he's not liberal. 
He's basically somewhere in between. He says on some issues he's conservative, on some issues he's so he's um you know liberal. So the fact of the matter is, like he talked about there, in terms of you know what's happening on the left, man, you guys across the pond in Britain got a bunch of pussies out there. I mean, both on Labour and on the Tories. And we've got our, you know, P-U-S-S-I-E-S as well here on some of the conservative side. You know, that's true. That's happening all the time. You know, the left and the liberal and the progressives, you know, they're going to go that way. And the same thing, anything is triggering a word, a song, a, in, you know, a look with the eye, anything at all that you basically, you know, it, you know, microaggressions, macroaggressions, it's all, all there. But, you know, it's good to see Kissinger standing up, not taking the BS from anybody, basically, and fighting back, not apologizing for anything at all, not backing down. And that's what we say all the time. You can't go on the defense with these guys. You can't go on the defense with leftists and progressives, you know, and these other activists from the LGBTQIA, M-O-U-S-E, the alphabet networks. You just can't. You got to get up there. You got to get up in the face. You got to tell them, hey, I'm not taking your crap. And by the way, you called me a racist. Well, I think you're a pedophile. I mean, that's the other thing, basically, you know, that can happen as well. So good on you. Good on you, Kissin, and your comedy. I love it. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love you to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow. You all know what to do. Put your comments down below. What would you think of Kissin's comedy routine? What would you think of the uh, girl that spends a little bit too much time at the buffet table, basically, you know, in the first clip? Anyways, take a look at our other video links above and below. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.